this is Jay Larson, Customer Success Manager, and this is Warren for Marketing. And we're here today to go through Westy with you. Westy's our new release coming out this weekend, and it has a lot of new features in it, and we're going to go through them and show you what they are today. So first up on our list is Assembly Builds. We've modified the print form on Assembly Builds so that it uh, the design fits in with the rest of our print forms and um, also made modifications to the footer if you have one that, that will uh, center everything um, depending on which uh, footer sections you're using. There was an issue where the, the middle footer section wasn't being centered properly and it now is on all documents. The audit log is next up on our list and in the audit log we have uh, done one thing, and we've added a new field to track, and it's called um, cleared posting. So when you clear a posting on a document, it will now show up in the audit log. The next up is locations. The locations um, window had a Avalara validation screen that really wasn't necessary if you didn't have Avalara enabled. So we removed that for those who don't have Avalara enabled. And for those of you who don't know what that is, you should check it out. It's automatic sales tax calculation. The customer vendor central is next up. And here we made a few, a few improvements. First of all, we've given you the ability to copy documents from right from the customer vendor central. So if you have a bill that's gonna be very similar to one that you've already created, you can just right click and choose copy. It'll copy all the information over for you. And uh, all you need to do is change what needs to be changed and it'll be done. And the second thing we did was we gave um, we fixed an error when grouping customers, so that has been resolved. Next up is the cash receipts. And on cash receipts, we did a few things. The first of all being um, the cash receipt list. So this column here used to say type, and it's now called deposit status, because that's more descriptive of what the column data is, is uh, including. And um, it'll say deposited or undeposited here. Uh, so that's um, a, a little more descriptive column header. And the next thing that we did in this list is we added um, a column. And this is also in the bill payments. The issue, the, or the column is called type. And it includes data about the kind of cash receipt or bill payment we're looking at. Because there's a little bit of confusion when prepayments um, were there and also when the zero dollar cash receipts were created to apply a prepayment to an invoice. So now they're all clearly labeled so that you know if it's a prepayment, if it's one that's applying a prepayment to an invoice, whether it's a, it's a invoice itself. Um, so th th that'll help you out there and the same is true of the bill payments. This uh, t uh, the type column will give you that same information. So the next up is cloud banking, and on cloud banking, the if the period wasn't selected in the matching window, it wouldn't let you match. So this is the matching window, and and if the period uh, didn't have a uh, the ending didn't have a value, it wouldn't let you match. So now. That's been addressed and the, all the possible matches will appear. Next up is Credit Memo. And this is a minor cosmetic issue, but when creating a credit memo, there's uh, different external and internal memos that you can add, just like the rest of the documents. And these were off, slightly off um, in size, so we uh, made them just consistent. Next up is Purchase Returns. And on Purchase Returns, we renamed some fields to match uh, the names on other documents. For example, this said uh, purchase return. Um, so label improvements, make it more clear. And on deposits, set up the deposits so that now when um, you change the amount deposited by unselecting or selecting a cash receipt, the totals are automatically adjusted and that was not working before. And we have improved the error handling when you tried to generate a bill when the item receipt was closed. So from, from um, the item receipt, if you were going to create a bill from it and it was closed, it opened up the bill, but it was blank. 
it, it should have just not opened up the bell. So now when you try to generate a bill, it'll just give you a message that you cannot generate a bill from a closed item receipt. We have a, an improvement in the um, item card. And on the item card, what we did is we changed that word cost up here, it's been confusing, to expected cost. So now we've, we've renamed all of the cost fields so that they should all be clear. This is expected cost, and down here on a previous release, we renamed the last cost, historical average cost, and current unit cost. So those should be all descriptive now. On the journal entries, um, it w it, there was an issue with the company name not being displayed in the journal entry, even though it was there. That's been fixed. So we've added a great um, uh, feature on all the documents now. If, you're, if you remember on sales orders, there's the uh, transactions tab, and this shows you all the related transactions on um, this, to the sales order. That field is now available on all of the documents. So if you were to go to an invoice, for example, you would be able to see all the related documents around the invoice throughout the entire transaction. So this one, we'll just say transactions, and it shows me that I have a sales order, a sales invoice, and a cash receipt. They're laid out a little bit um, better, and the one that you're on is highlighted by being bold. So uh, that would be something I think people will enjoy. Also on the packing list, uh, an issue where this field here actually said terms instead of dates, so we updated that label. We fixed an issue in the bank register. The issue was that when you first come here, there isn't an account chosen. In this drop-down list that you see here, there's no account, it's blank. So it causes confusion because a, a, an error message would appear and um, addressed and now when you navigate into this, this uh, feature, you will see an account chosen automatically for you. So we smoothed out an issue um, when you generated a sales invoice from a sales order and that is when lot numbers were involved and the lot number was not carried over to the invoice. So that has been addressed. We've made some great improvements with the, the email functionality on orders and invoices. So when you go to email something now, we've moved the body up to the top and to the right of the email fields and we've moved the, pr the PDF printed document attachment below it. And we've also added this great new um, what you see is what you get formatting um, menu up here. So you can actually format your, your uh, words in, in the body, word style. Change the fonts, change the sizes, add a link, add all sorts of cool stuff. This is um, a feature that people have been asking for for a while, so I think people are gonna like that. So on the sandbox, People who haven't used the sandbox, you should go check this out. It's an awesome feature. On the start page, you have sandbox here, and we renamed it first of all, so it says test company sandbox. And um, we've added some new functionality that so that you can choose what gets copied over to your sandbox initially, rather than having to wait till it finishes and then decide you want something different. So now we have, you can create your sandbox from your live data. You can create it from sample data. You can create it with no data, or you can decide not to create it at all. So those are the options when you create your sandbox. That will be um, give you some choices. So now, um, serial numbers were also an issue when you're adding serial numbers. It allowed you to add duplicates. So we've um, we've prevented that now. So you cannot add duplicate serial numbers. Next, we are on to ship station and we um, our shipping section. Tons of improvements on the shipping module and ship station in, in general. So we'll look, th look at those really quickly here. First of all, on the shipment, when you went to generate a shipping label, if you didn't choose something in the weight unit of measure, which is located, so it's down here in this little line right now, this ounces, if you didn't change this to something else, you got an error um, immediately. So that's been fixed. You don't, no longer have to touch that weight unit of measure field. And um, while we're here, we've rearranged things a little bit, um, made it a little more sleek and um, multifunctional. We've moved all of the fields for the packages down in this grid so that you can add as many packages as you want with the same interface. 
We've um, improved the error message handling of all of these combinations of, of items. So if you choose a combination that isn't accurate um, or isn't right for you know, the, the uh, choices you've ch chosen, it'll give you the appropriate error message. So for example, if you choose a flat rate envelope and um, you don't have any height, width, or um, dimensions, it's, it, won't, it won't give you an error message. Uh, before it asks you for those, and if you choose one where you need it, for example, uh, a box package, and you don't have your height, width, and uh, length, it will give you a message that says, "I, you know, add your, add those fields." Before it gave you an, an error message that wasn't um, very accurate. And I've saved that, which is a new, another new feature. Did you see that? You can now save your label without print, going to print it, and you can go back to it at any time and finish by clicking on this link. So I've, I've got one started, but I'm not finished. That save button will, will uh, take care of that for you. Now, if you want to, when you're ready to save and print and, and you don't have all the fields filled out, you can save and print. It'll give you the specific fields that need to get filled out. And they'll even point you in the right direction up here with this little balloon that tells you what you need to have filled out. We've changed these buttons slightly. They now are more descriptive of their function. Um, the save and print um, will save and print, fancy that. And the save button will just save, like I mentioned before. The test label has been made um, red and put over to the right side of Update Carrier so that you can print a test label um, before you print the real one. And then down here in the addresses fields, uh, we've, we've made these read only. And because uh, the addresses are pulling from the shipment document itself. So if these need to be updated, they should really be updated on the shipment document, so in the addresses tab. So if you want to update the address, do it here, and then it'll automatically be carried over to the shipping labels. And then a couple more things, we, we fixed a couple labels where there uh, was, this didn't have a space in it, and um, there was another one that we re renamed. So just some general cosmetic improvements on, on the shipping label as well. And uh, we think that that will make this experience be a lot more, more um, pleasant for you, so enjoy that. And that is our Westie release. Uh, please don't hesitate to call our support line if you have questions about these new features, and look forward to seeing you on our next release. Good day. Cool. Thanks, Jay. Great job.